divine word. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Jesus, divine word made flesh, from the beginning you already were, before even time began, you are a Son and with the Father and the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. But in the fullness of time, you who created man became man yourself. Through God and the Holy Spirit and Mary, you became Jesus, divine word made flesh. You came to our world to save us and to show us how to live and love here so that we may live and love hereafter. Dear Jesus, divine word incarnate, please teach us to follow you. May our love for you always be made flesh, not ever lost in word or song alone. In prayer, we come face to face with you, like you with the Father and the Holy Spirit. In love and service, may we likewise come face to face with our sisters and brothers, the least of them most of all. For as we treat each other, so do we treat you. In your name, we pray now, always and in always. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A blessed day to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is the third week in Ordinary Time. Memorial of St. Timothy and Titus Bishop. Our presider today is Reverend Father Sherwin Aron, SBD. Our celebration will now begin. Please stand. We are gathered together to praise and thank the Lord in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration, my dear brothers and sisters. This morning, or today, we remember two great companions of St. Paul in, her, in his missionary journey, Saints Timothy and Titus. We pray in our Mass today in a special way for all missionaries who are like St. Timothy and Titus, like St. Paul, who are preaching the Word of God in different parts of the world, sowing the seed of the Word of God to all people. They may, we pray that they may persevere always amidst the hardship and difficulties of sharing the Word of God, giving witness to our Lord Jesus Christ. And also we pray for ourselves that all of us Christians be responsible 
and generous also in our vocation and mission to be missionaries sharing the Word of God in our daily life. Let us now pause for a moment as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who adored Saints Timothy and Titus with apostolic virtues, grant through the intercession of them both that living justly and devoutly in this present age, we may merit to reach our heavenly homeland. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. I yearn to see you again, recalling your tears, so that I may be filled with joy. As I recall your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother, Louise, and in your mother, Eunice, and that I am confident lives also in you. For this reason, I remind you to steer into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nation. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the one world firm, not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nation. Please stand to honor the gospel.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the sea. A very large crowd gathered around him so that he got into a boat on the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on land. And he taught them at length in parables. And in the course of his instruction, he said to them, Hear this, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil, sprung up at once, but the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scourged and withered for the lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no grain. And some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. It came up and grew and yielded thirty, sixty, and hundredfold. He added, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. And when he was alone, those present along with the twelve questioned him about the parables. He answered them, the mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to those outside, everything comes in parables, so that they may look and see, but not perceive, and hear and listen, but not understand, in order that they may not be converted and be forgiven. Jesus said to them, Do you understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear, Satan comes at once and takes away the word sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, who when they hear the word, receive it at once with joy. But they have no roots, they last only for a time. Then when tribulation and or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those sown among thorns are another sort. They are the people who hear the word, but worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, and the cravings of other things intrude and choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But those sown on rich soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirty and sixty and hundredfold. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed day to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, those who are joining me here in the Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, and also those who are joining through our live streaming. Last Sunday, we celebrated the Sunday of the Word of God which instituted by Pope Francis on September 30, 2019. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, wants all believers to have a deep knowledge and love for the sacred scripture. The celebration of the Sunday of the Word of God is also the fiesta of our shrine here in Christ the King Mission Seminary. It is named the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word. It is dedicated primarily for the devotion and promotion of the Word of God, pagpapalaganap ng salita ng Diyos, pagbibigay halaga sa salita ng Diyos. That's why throughout this week, we notice that the Gospel book or the Word of God is being enthroned, pagpapahalaga sa salita ng Diyos. Yesterday, we celebrated the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. We all know that after the conversion of St. Paul, St. Paul became the greatest disciple of Jesus who went around the world to spread the good news of God. St. Paul is, the greatest, is one of the greatest missionaries who spread the word of God to various cultures, places, and people. And we all know he wrote many epistles or letters in our Bible giving testimony to the good news of the risen Christ. As St. Paul says in his letter to the 1 Corinthians, 
chapter 9, verse 16. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast since I am compelled to preach. But woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Today, we are celebrating the memorial of Saints Timothy and Titus. As I mentioned in my introduction, these two saints were companions of St. Paul in his missionary journey in Corinthians, Thessalonians, and other places. And they were part of St. Paul's mission of sharing the Word of God, giving witness to Jesus. And so this whole week, my dear brothers and sisters, starting last Sunday, we are celebrating the National Bible Week. We are reminded by our church and instructed for one week to focus on reading and studying the Bible, the Word of God, for our spiritual growth, for our moral guidance, and deeper knowledge about our Lord Jesus. As St. Jerome would say, ignorance of the Scripture is ignorance of Christ. In connection to our gospel today, the famous parable of the sower, our gospel reading challenges us and asks us to reflect as we celebrate the National Bible Week. How do we receive the Word of God in our lives? And what kind of recipient are we of the Word of God? As we listen and reflect the Word of God, can we see that it's growing and bearing fruit in our life, lumalago ba sa ating buhay? And another challenge for us is how do we participate in the mission of the church in sharing the Word of God in our daily life, like St. Paul and St. Timothy and Titus? Do we also participate in the calling and mission of the church to be missionaries? sharing the Word of God in our daily life. Jesus, in our Gospel for today, speaks of the parable of the sower. The Word of God is sown in different kinds of soil, representing different kinds of recipient of the Word of God. For sure, many times, na pagnilayan na natin to, nabasa na natin itong parable, the famous parable of Jesus. Here, Jesus reminds us again in this parable that God is ever ready to speak to each of us and to give us understanding of His Word. God is the sower who keeps sowing freely and generously God's Word. God's Word is consistently at work in us, planting good seed in our life. Kaya kung titignan natin, the sower, our God, sa kanyang pagtatanim ng butil ng salita ng Diyos, he is so consistent, persistent, and, gener and a generous sower. Consistent, palagian, persistent. Alam niya, makakarating din ito sa mabuting lupa. And he's so generous in sowing the seed, kahit sino, kahit saan. But the problem is, on how do we receive the message of God? How do we receive the grace of God? being poured in our lives. Are we like the rocky ground? It cannot grow because it is not deep. Meaning, we listen to the Word of God, but it just passes. It does not sink into our hearts, or even we cannot understand it in our minds. And more so, we cannot put it into action. We just neglect the Word of God because we think it is not important. There are times also that the Word of God is being choked by the thorns of, in our life, such as preoccupation with other things that can distract us from what is truly important and worthwhile, and letting our hearts and minds be consumed with material things that can easily weigh down and draw us away from the core of God's message, resulting from that bearing fruit. Minsan, we cannot understand the Word of God or we don't want to listen to the Word of God because we give priority on what concerns us, worldly things, material things. And even sometimes we do not, we do not want that the Word of God will shake in our lives. 
But even there are many times that blocks and hinders the Word of God, my dear brothers and sisters. Again, we are reminded that we have a God who is our persistent sower. He's not tired in sowing the seeds and hoping that someday His message will fall in a good soil where it will grow and bear fruit abundantly. The sower never gives up but keeps on sowing freely and generously. Even when the ground of the person's heart, even in our hearts, is still shallow, rocky, or thorny, God waits patiently and sows perseveringly. And that is why Jesus says, Hear then the parable of the sower. We continue then to pray, my dear sisters and brothers, in our Mass today as we celebrate the National Bible Week, that our hearts will be open to the Word of God, to the work of the sower, the work of God in our life, and submit with full trust and obedience to the sower in sowing good seed in our life. Let us open our hearts to accept the Word of God so that it will bear fruit abundantly. And as we cooperate with the work of the sower, the work and plan of God in our life, we continue to fight and resist those, thi those things that hinder the Word of God to grow in our lives. And with this, we may eventually see how God's message bear fruit in us, fruit that will lead us peace and joy, and soon fruit that will lead us eternity. In this time of pandemic, in this time of many challenges that is happening in our world, in our society, and in our personal lives, it is only the Word of God, the message of God, will bring us serenity, peace, and hope. And that will bear fruit in our lives, even amidst difficulties and challenges. And so, and also the, the challenge for all of us, that as we receive the Word of God in our lives, let us also imitate the sober, to also share the Word of God consistently, persistently, and generously in our daily lives that we may always be true to our calling as Christians, witnesses of the Word. Naway tularan din natin ang ating Panginoon or tularan din natin sina St. Paul, St. Timothy, and Titus that we saw also the Word of God. Palagian, kahit na maraming pagsubok, kahit naranasan nila St. Paul, Timothy, and Titus, patuloy sila sa paglaganap ng salita ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay nakikitang salita ng Diyos na sinasabuhay natin araw-araw. St. Luke in chapter 8 verse 15 says, Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Amen. Please stand. Christ teaches us through the parables. Christ is the sower of the seed of the God's Word. Let us respond to His work by praying to the Father. Let our response be, Divine Sower, bless us. Divine Sower, bless us. That the Holy Father and bishops, through their teaching and way of life, may encourage the flock to follow Christ's way of love. We pray. Divine, Divine Sower, Sower, bless us. us. That renewed effort may be intensified so that peace and stability may be attained in the family of nations, we pray. Divine, Divine Sower, Sower, bless, bless us. us. That married couples may experience the warmth of God's love in their relationship, we pray. Divine, Divine Sower, Sower, bless, bless us. us. That the sick and the elderly may be encouraged by the words of comfort and assurances of those who care for them, we pray. Divine Sower, bless us. For our frontline health care workers and other essential workers, that God may cover them with his mantle of protection, sustain them, and give them strength as they perform their respective duties. May we have enough medical provisions, health care facilities, and other resources to use for everyone who needs cure, we pray. Divine, Divine Sower, bless, bless us. us. That the faithful departed may behold the things 
that no eyes have seen and no ear has heard, we pray. Divine Sower, bless us. Heavenly Father, help us to recognize the seed of your word at work in our lives. May we never get distracted by the cares of this world, but be active in your service and so produce an abundant harvest. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to me and drink, come to me and drink, O let all who are thirsty, come to me and drink, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and know that I am the to me and drink come to me and drink oh let all who are thirsty come to me and drink i will pour my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy Come to me and drink, come to me and drink, oh let all who are thirsty, come to me and drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray that the offerings of your people, which we bring in celebration of Saints Timothy and Titus, and in your kindness render us fully acceptable by giving us sincerity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for us on the festival of Saints Timothy and Titus, you bid your church rejoice. So do you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing to him, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Wonderful holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jufa, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread, giving a thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring, a, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles with saint timothy and titus with our founder saint arnold jansen saint joseph renadimets and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace and the love of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with all. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of 
of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. You shall cross the barren desert But you shall not die your thirst You shall wander far in safety And death is at your side Know that I am with afraid I go before you always come follow me and I will give you rest Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, nourish in us that faith taught by the preaching of the apostles and keep safe by the labors of St. Timothy and Titus through Christ our Lord. Amen. Horatio Imperata, merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our needs to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has deserved and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon with love by your healing hand, dispel the fear and the sick of the dead, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We ask you to guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccine developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use this vaccine to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with confidence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body. Strengthen their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they restore to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good and help to those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessity, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael and Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calunsun, pray for us. Saints Arnold Johnson and Joseph Ferdinand, pray for us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. With our heads, we pray for God's blessing. Graciously enlighten your family, O Lord, we pray, that by holding fast to what is pleasing to you, they may, they may be worthy to accomplish all that is good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty and loving God, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and share the good news of Jesus, the Divine Word. Thanks be to God. Be blessed, St. Joseph, a person according to the heart of God. You were found worthy to care for God's own mother and be a father of his beloved. We honor in your person the choice of the Eternal Father who wished to share with you his power over his only begotten Son, the choice of the Divine Son himself who wanted to be subject to you and be called Son of Joseph, the choice of the Holy Spirit who singled you out to be the protector and chaste companion of his Immaculate Spouse, Mary Most Holy. We share your joy that you were permitted to cherish the child Jesus with tenderly love and care. We reverence the self-control and continence which you manifested all during those years when you lived under the same roof with the Virgin Mother. Praise be Lord who has given you such stirring color character that the Virgin Mother could place her full tr trust in you to protect her. Be blessed and praised, our Father and Protector, for living a life so worthy of imitation. Make us zealous to follow in your footsteps. Blessed Saint Joseph, faithful spouse of Mary, ever virgin and guardian father of ch child Jesus, we come before you to offer you our filial love and gratitude. We thank you for the loving care which you bestowed so faithfully on Mary and the divine child. Show that the same Father will care now to us who are members of Christ and the mystical bond of his body and blood. Blessed Father and Patron, be our intercession with God. Implore for us the purity of heart which are always manifested in your undertakings. Teach us your lively faith, your prompt obedience to God's will, your unassuming way, and your great love for Jesus the Lord. Glorious Saint Joseph, we implore your aid for entire believing community, our Holy Father, and all bishop, priests, and religious of the Church. Guide and assist also all temporal rulers. Be the model of patience and diligence for all workers, and come to the aid of the poor and the afflicted, so that they obtain what they need to live worthy Christian lives. Be with us above all at the hours of death. Allow us to die in the arms of Jesus and Mary as you did, by assistance of your powerful prayers. Intercede, we beg you, for the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of our families, that they be admitted to the glorious vision of the triune God. In the silence of our heart, let us present to God our needs, prayers and intention through the intercession of Saint Joseph. Remember, most pure spouse of Mary, ever virgin, our protector, Saint Joseph, that no one ever had recourse to your protection or implored your aid without obtaining relief. Confiding, therefore, in your goodness, we come before you and humbly beg you, do not despise our petitions, guardian father of our Savior, graciously receive them. Amen. Prayer to St. Joseph for workers and those seeking employment. Silent and well-known carpenter in Nazareth, model of workers, by your work of your hands, you gave your contribution to the work of the creation. You earned your living and provided for the needs of the Holy Family. Intercede for all workers in the difficulties of their daily lives, especially for the unemployed, in their anxiety for tomorrow, so that through their guidance of God, the great architect and builder, they may all use this strength and talents to make visible God's creation, to offer a concrete service to society, and to earn wages worthy of their efforts. With confidence and trust, we make this prayer through Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Bye now.